welcome everybody. Uh, it's high noon. It's high noon at the OK Corral and you're at LA2M. LA2M. If anyone's here for the accounting conference, that's next door. <laughs> this is LA2M and we do cool things in here. Not that accounting's not cool. But uh, anyway, my name is Derek Barabon, CEO of Magenix Digital Marketing. Apologize for the bad jokes. There is a seat up here at your table, sir, if you want to sit at the table. One more seat up front, hot spot, right up front with the table, okay. All right, so uh, I'm up here with Stacy from Dollar Bill Copy, and uh, Dollar Bill does uh, digital printing. Stacy does a lot of work with us. And the reason we're up here is because this is Lunch and Armor Marketing. We're a 501c3 nonprofit, which means we are a marketing education organization. So every week we have programs here, and I think a lot of you are new, right? Who's first timers? First timers? Okay, well thank you. There's lots of first timers. It's because um, of Brian. Yeah, because of Brian, exactly. Brian knows a lot of weird people that tend to show up. <laughs> at events. No, but I, I think this is an important topic, cloud computing. It's a hot topic. And um, it's like church set up front. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, there, there are some seats set up front. You can save Mark the page. Okay. So we're a nonprofit, and uh, for those of you who are new, there are menus on the table if you want to eat. That's ten dollars. You pay Connors directly. It includes your meal and tip and drink, which is a great deal. Um, if you want to donate to LA2M, uh, we pass the hat. So we're old school. Okay, and we take this money, and we're actually we decided we're going to hire someone for uh, approximately ten hours a week to help run LA2M because we're completely volunteer run. Uh, people like Stacy, myself, D. Davy, who's not here. Um, David Wade in back who's tweeting for us. I mean, Roger, yeah, Roger does the video. Carter does the photos. I mean, we're all nonprofit, which means we're not getting paid. We're just doing this because we believe in it. Uh, everything we do is archived on our website with a video that Roger takes. We archive it. And it's a great wealth of knowledge if you want to learn from some of the past uh, greats who have spoken here. Um, we have a great person today. So Stacey's going to pass the hat. We suggest three bucks. You don't have to donate. Uh, no pressure. No one's watching. Okay. Uh, here, here's my book. I brought my book. I bought some copies of it. You can get it on Amazon. Nicholas ordered it. This is uh, the New Media Driver's License Resource Guide. And uh, Roger said I should pass that around. Will, Roger's always helped me out. He said pass that around. Take a look at it. If you want a copy, I'm going to be selling for twenty. It's twenty four ninety five on Amazon and at Nicholas. Although it's not a Nicholas yet. But if you want a copy today, I can sign them after the meeting. Just uh, grab one and come up, and it's 20 bucks. And uh, it's a really good book. I use it in my class. I co-wrote it with a uh, PhD colleague of mine at Michigan State University. We use it for our class, but it's also a business book. It's a really great way to learn new media marketing. It's kind of practicing what you preach. Uh, a lot of what we learned here um, is things that you'll learn in that book as well. So just different ways to learn. Um, and just to give you an idea of format, our speaker speaks for approximately 30 minutes. We will have some time for Q&A. And then we will be able to do introductions. So at 12.45, we'll do introductions all the way around the room. You get to tell us your name, your company, and how we can help you. And, uh, and then we finish at 1 o'clock, just to give you an idea of timing. We do have a LinkedIn group, Facebook group. Uh, we have a Twitter. You should follow us on all those. And if you want to check in on Foursquare, you can check right in at LA2M. So feel free to check in. All right? Uh, any brief questions before we introduce our speaker? No? Okay. All right. So today's speaker is Brian Beecher. And I've actually, I've known Brian for a while just because he works at the same place my wife Amy works who's back there at ICPSR, which is this huge data archive at the University of Michigan. And um, Brian knows a lot of the same people I know too because he's been very involved as a computer person in this community for a while. So today he's going to talk about cloud computing, which I think we're all in interested in. So let's welcome him with a uh, big round of applause, Brian Beecher. Uh, is the mic doing anything? Yep. Yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name's uh, Brian Beecher, and I thought I'd, I'd tell you just a little background about myself to help set some uh, context for the uh, cloud uh, talk. Um, so my background is in, uh, oh, go back. Can you edit this out later? If you can see light, that's good. Light, light in your eyes, yeah. Um, uh, so uh, my background is in, in software uh, systems and uh, data networking. Um, so I'm not one of those uh, hardware guys that really loves to take things apart and tinker with them. You know those types of people. Some of them are good. Um, but uh, so uh, the cloud has been a way to really get away from a lot of the hardware and gadgets that you might have had to go buy and operate uh, uh, in the past. Uh, 
So I, what I thought I would do is talk about cloud just a, a little bit, give people an overview of it, um, give you enough to be dangerous, enough so that uh, you could go to cocktail parties and say it was kind of hippy and people would be impressed. Um, you know, clouds can be a little difficult. Uh, you know, I thought, you know, what's some kind of opening that I could do to you know, kind of tell people what the cloud is? It's kind of hard to find. And, um, you know, in a way, the cloud is it's sort of like pornography um, in that uh, it's hard to define, but you kind of know it when you see it. <laughs> so, um, we kind of have the ABCs of the cloud. So there'll be 26 kind of present slides. And if you can shout out the next slide, uh, maybe it'll be a prize. Maybe uh, Berlin will buy you with yours. Uh, so let's start with A. Uh, a is for Amazon Web Services. Uh, you can't really talk about. Uh, uh, you can't really uh, uh, talk about cloud without talking about Amazon. Uh, they've been doing cloud computing uh, for several years now. Um, the place where I work, uh, yeah, for the intro. I, so I work at a part of the University of Michigan called the Institute for Social Research, and uh, the specific part is called the Inter-University Consortium for Political and Social Research. So you know, if it's well on a business card, it's easy to say. Um, and uh, we are not just just a big data archive. We are the world's largest archive of social science research data. Um, and so as you might expect uh, to archive all of this research data and make it available to researchers across the world, you need a certain amount of technology to do that. And uh, we've been using Amazon for an increasing amount of our business. Amazon makes infrastructure available in the cloud. So you get virtual servers. Uh, they can run Windows. They can run Linux. There's virtual um, systems for running things called the domain name system, uh, databases, all sorts of things in Amazon's cloud. Uh, the way that we actually got involved in Amazon's cloud is uh, we're in a building on campus. It's the Perry Building. It's near uh, it's near Lippy Burger, which is a big landmark. And uh, there was an ice storm, I think it was in 2008, it was kind of around Christmas time, 2008, big ice storm, and it knocked out our power for a week to the building. And of course, the social science researchers love to do research between Christmas and New Year's, that's, that's what they do. Um, and they couldn't get their data from us because our website uh, was down that whole week, we had no electricity. So we knew we needed some sort of a replica so that, I think there's a way to turn this off. If only I had some Macintosh text over here. Um, <laughs> if, uh, uh, so we knew we needed some sort of a replica of some sort. And so we started talking to the University of Michigan. They just opened a new data center. And, you know, well, look, we have some equipment. We put it in your data center. And they said, well, you know, we have this meeting every couple of weeks where we talk about who's allowed into the club. Uh, let me get back to you, and uh, we'll let you know. So they came back a couple of weeks, and they said, yeah, you know, we took a vote. Yeah, you can hang out with us here at the data center. Uh, but how much electricity do you need? Uh, I'm a software. I don't know how much electricity I need, like, you know, this much. And, uh, but it kind of went back and forth and back and forth, and we could just never really get in there. So we've been kind of playing around with the Amazon virtual servers and Amazon's cloud. And Amazon only asked one question uh, when we wanted to sign up, and that was, what's your credit card number? <laughs> and I knew the answer to that one, and I entered it in, and uh, we've been spending a couple thousand a month ever since then. Okay, B is for? Uh, big news. So Box. Uh, so Box used to be called Box.net, but they shortened it to just Box. Uh, Box is a, is a cloud company. Uh, they, make, um, they make collaboration systems. So uh, Box's uh, place is, look, uh, rather than you uh, standing up systems to share documents between people in your office or people between locations, uh, use our system. Use our cloud. We'll, you can, uh, you can uh, have a, uh, use your web browser to copy files in and out of your Box cloud. Uh, you can set access controls so only the marketing department can see the marketing files. Um, Box has been around a little while, and the uh, University of Michigan and other uh, big schools around the country have been signing up um, with Box to try out some of their services. 
it would be the right kind of solution for people, I think, that had a, maybe worked at a larger company, or maybe a, a smaller company with many locations, and you're always wondering or struggling with, you know, how do I share content? How do I share files between my colleagues in these different locations? C is for? Collaboration. So uh, cloud computing. Uh, a lot of times people will use cloud. Uh, cloud is sort of broad, like pornography, it includes a lot of different things. Uh, <laughs> cloud computing is really just maybe one part of the cloud. I'm uh, really kind of maybe virtualizing desktop machines, virtualizing servers. So instead of, so if you're a software guy like me and you fear the hardware, and you can't even find like the, you know, the switch to turn it on and off, having the cloud where it's all really just software running on somebody else's server who takes care of it for you is a, is a great thing. And so uh, people are taking um, tasks and uh, functions that they maybe normally would have done in-house on their own hardware, where they employ some systems administrator, maybe a data center manager to manage stuff. And instead, they can move these tasks into the cloud. Or maybe a researcher has a problem, and they need like 10,000 computers to solve the problem. But they only need those 10,000 computers for about six hours, and then they don't need them again. And again, you know, the cloud is good for stuff like that. D is for disaster. <laughs> Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox is uh, in a similar space as this thing called Box or Box.net, but it's more for consumers. Uh, Dropbox is something, there's a client on this iPad here. That must be you. <laughs> Um, Dropbox, uh, there's a web client, so you can move files in and out of Dropbox. It's a way for you to share files between different computers, between your home computer and your work computer. Um, like I said, you can use a web browser uh, on your work computer, home computer. You can also make Dropbox look like a, a map to drive. You can just drag them in there, drag them out. Um, in some ways, the, drop, the Dropbox functions as the file system on an iPad. So if you need a place to park documents on the iPad, it's not a great place to really do it, unless you have this little Dropbox stuff. Um, and Dropbox, like a lot of the cloud providers, they give you some amount of storage, and maybe like four or five gigs, I can't remember right now, uh, for free. And then they're hoping that you get hooked on it. So actually, maybe the cloud is more like drugs than pornography. <laughs> uh, but they're hoping you get hooked on it, and uh, then you buy more storage to keep the storage up. I never really like using Dropbox. Dropbox was in the newspaper, I don't know, within the past couple of months. Um, somebody, so people ask, hey, Dropbox guys, is it safe? Is it private if I copy my stuff there? Can anybody else see it? And the Dropbox guy said, uh, yeah, sure, it's, it's safe. Nobody else can see this. And then it turned out later that the sysadmins, kind of like back up the machines and kind of manage the files, actually they could see the files. And so there was a, there was a, a big kerfuffle up over that. All right, E is for elastic. So uh, a, an adjective that gets used a lot with cloud computing or the cloud is how it's elastic. And what people mean by that is it's really easy to provision more stuff in the cloud when you need it and then get rid of it when you don't want it. So if you have like, you know, hardware or data centers or staff, they're really hard to get rid of unless you maybe work for the mafia. <laughs> but, uh, but with the cloud, everything is all virtual, right? And so, you know, you, um, you, uh, you know, tell Amazon or your cloud provider, I need this much storage, you use it for as long as you need it, and you don't need it anymore, you get rid of it, and you stop paying for it. Um, so usually the idea is you can scale up and scale down as quickly as you need to. And, you know, if you have some reasonable bond, you can get as big as you need to. Uh, we used the elastic element of uh, Amazon's cloud when we discovered, you know, guys, we had this research project, and the researcher guaranteed us that everybody in the world was going to use this new thing that he or she dreamed of. And so we provisioned a big virtual piece of iron to run it, so it'll handle millions of uses. And it turns out, actually, no one wants to use it. So we can scale it down to a very small uh, iPod. Also, when something turns out to be more popular, we can scale it up. Okay, how about that? Fun? Fun is good. The cloud is fun. 
Uh, F is for FISMA. Does anybody know what FISMA stands for? <laughs> FISMA stands for fills out lots and lots and lots of government paperwork. <laughs> uh, FISMA is a is a it's an act of Congress, and it's it's, it's uh, described and specifies how computing systems, how information systems, should be managed by government agencies. So if you work in the government, it's something you run into a lot. Or if you're like the Institute for Social Research, and you will do anything the government wants for the right amount of money, you can also run into this. Um, one thing we've been experiencing more and more is where we collaborate with a government agency, we get a grant or a contract, and they say, look, you know, you need to tell us how your information systems are business compliant. So I did that once. It just about killed me. Uh, lots and lots of paperwork, you know, do you have a policy on, do you have a policy about who can go into your machine room? Is your policy posted? What is your policy? And so on. And there are just, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of these things. Um, so we did a lot of work, and there are three different levels of FISMA, low, medium, and high. You know, high is if you have, like, you know, nuclear weapons, uh, medium, maybe stuff about health information or money or something. Uh, and low, you know, our, the stuff we have generally is pretty open kinds of stuff. We don't, we don't have that much confidential uh, content in a place like ICPSR. And so uh, we did the paperwork to, to certify at a low level, and it was a huge amount of work. Well, it turns out many of the cloud providers do this certification work for their own technology, their own infrastructure. So Amazon has already been certified as having medium level FISMA. So if you're doing some work with an agency, a government uh, agency, somebody else who wants to be sure that your systems meet FISMA, you can save yourself a lot of work by using a cloud provider's technology instead of rolling your own and writing all of your own policies and documenting it and then refreshing it and reviewing it every year. Gee, you gotta, you gotta talk about Google for cloud. Uh, the University of Michigan, in fact, is in the process of getting rid of 101 different email systems, calendar systems, and is moving to Google um, for mail, calendar, groups, collaboration, a lot of stuff. Um, it's, it's kind of big news around the university. Uh, certainly Google provides all sorts of services in their cloud. I mean, I'm sure many people here have a Gmail account. Um, they have Google Docs where you can, you know, kind of like some of the other cloud services, uh, you can put documents in Google Docs, you can share, you can collaborate. Uh, one of the really cool things about Google is, so if you've ever sent Word documents back and forth, and who's got the latest one, did I send this one to you, did you track changes? You know, Google Docs, there's one No, it's you. No, it's you. Uh, my, my cell phone is off, and my cell phone is made in 1970. <laughs> uh, uh, but you know, with Google Docs, when you're working on that uh, that uh, document together, you can see each other make changes in real time. It's it's really a nice way for working together. Uh, H for Hadoop. Um, Hadoop. I don't know if it's really a uh, cloud stuff, but um, the smart guys at Google invented something called MapReduce. It's kind of a, a system for solving very complex problems of a certain type, where you kind of divide them up into lots and lots of little problems and solve them all individually. You kind of map them how problems get solved, and then the reduce is bringing all the answers together into a final single answer. And Hadoop is the open source uh, really available version of Google's secret sauce that they invented, this map reduce. Um, and when people need to solve particular kinds of problems that require uh, large amounts of computing, large amounts of storage, um, again, the cloud is an attractive place to do that kind of, uh, of work. And, uh, and not all the time, but uh, many times we'll use a technology like to do, uh, to do that. Um, this is the, this is the uh, this is the slide that gives you the cocktail party uh, things you can use to, to say 50 things. Uh, when people talk about the cloud, they talk about three different spaces. One is infrastructure as a service, another is platform as a service, and another is uh, software as a service. 
So the infrastructure as a service cloud providers are in the business of providing kind of the raw material. Uh, probably the IT shop would be the main customers of these materials. They would use this infrastructure delivered through the cloud to build solutions, build things that you really need. Whereas uh, platform and especially software as a service are a little higher up on the food chain. I'll talk a bit more about those uh, uh, in the later slide. Uh, but the idea is you can kind of interact with the cloud at different levels, maybe more of an infrastructure component level or higher <laughs> up where more of the work is being done by the cloud provider. Here. Uh, and then if you want to sound very sophisticated, you know, when somebody says, so what's your cloud strategy? You can say, well, you know, we're not really sure if we want to engage as a platform as a service or software as a service. And then kind of give them a knowing look. And, you know. <laughs> J is for jobs. Lots of jobs in the cloud. And all the jobs might end up in the cloud. Um, I just posted a, a cloud job uh, within the past couple of weeks. It's a, a senior systems architect uh, to do cloud stuff um, for us. Um, but uh, I, my sense is that for people who have experience building things in the cloud, uh, that would be a very hot area, um, having those skills, having that experience. Um, uh, I think there will always be a place for people who say, you know, I manage this big machine room of computers, or I manage this rack or two of computers. Um, but I think people who have some experience and skills in using these cloud services to deliver solutions uh, will be, it'll be easy to find work. K is kind of for Kindle. Um, in some ways, uh, you know, Kindle isn't that much cloud stuff. I mean, the books are kind of in the cloud, but they come down to your Kindle, and you've got them on your Kindle. Unless Amazon wants it back, and then it might be gone off your Kindle. Um, but uh, the Amazon guys are also making a Kindle app available for the iPad, and um, I, mean, I think there's also a web version of Kindle available where the books really do stay in the cloud, and you're just looking at it, getting to it through the app or, um, or through your browser, and so the books are in the cloud. So you don't have to have those books cluttering up your house and all those bookshelves from Ikea. Uh, L is for Lorax. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's obvious. Um, uh, M is for music. Uh, certainly people have seen uh, services like iTunes where the music is in the cloud and maybe shared among various devices. Um, also Google uh, launched a new music service, I think it was in late 2011. Uh, you can store up to 40,000 songs in Google Music. Uh, you upload things through your iTunes library. And so if you have a lot of uh, media around your house and you want to be able to get to it from any web browser, or you just want to back up all of these songs you have and want another place to put it, you can put the first uh, 40,000 of them in Google's cloud for you as a uh, And as for Netflix, this is where all of our entertainment is in the cloud instead of on our shelf again. Um, I'm sorry, curious, how many people have used Netflix or used it on a regular basis? So, um, and you can see, I, I tried to find a slide that has the loading movie thing on there, so like the network isn't working so well. So some, you know, the cloud has a lot of nice things going for it, but only when you can actually get to the cloud. Uh, both is for OpenStack. Um, so Amazon is such a dominant player in the cloud space, a few other companies got together and uh, organizations and thought, well, what can we do to make things a little more open in the cloud? So there's a standard uh, protocol, standard interfaces for doing things in the cloud. Um, and OpenStack was born. Uh, I think the two main parties involved are Rackspace, that I'll talk about when we get to R, uh, and NASA. And they're really the, the drivers behind it. Although a lot of companies have signed up to do OpenStack. Um, so really, OpenStack's uh, promise is, look, if you're an organization, you're in the cloud business, if you build your service or build your interfaces so that they follow OpenStack rules, OpenStack standards, then more people will be able to use your stuff. Of course, it also might mean that, more, that fewer people are locked in to your cloud provider um, offering because they can take what they've written for your product and maybe move it over to 
competitor's product. Uh, P is for privacy. So privacy always comes up when people are talking about the cloud. You know, is my stuff private when it's in the cloud? It's not. So if people say it is, it, it just isn't. Uh, but it's not clear to me it's actually private when it's on our, on our home machines too. Um, you know, so many, so many people's home computers are left on all the time. They're connected to the network. Might not be patched all that often or backed up all that well managed that securely. So even if the stuff isn't in the cloud, but it's on your home machine, you know, how many copies of it are somewhere in the Ukraine being, you know, reviewed by hackers? Certainly if you run Windows. What's that? Certainly if you run Windows. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Oh, yeah. You've heard a lot of things about public and private clouds. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what's the deal? Is that kind of the question? Yes. Yeah, OK. What's the difference? Yeah, so the question is, so what's the difference between public public cloud and private cloud? Um, well, pub, uh, the things I've all been talking about so far are kind of public cloud, right? Uh, commercial companies that are providing a service to all sorts of different people. Um, there are there are, are reasons, either uh, emotional or, uh, or business, why you might not be able to put your own stuff in the public cloud. Maybe it's too private, maybe it's too sensitive, maybe the person doesn't trust the cloud, and so they you know, build their own thing. So certainly if you were going to build your own cloud, and uh, you know, buy all of your own like, data center, right, stuff, real hardware to build your own cloud, maybe you would follow the OpenStack type stuff as you were building it so that it would be more... Um, you know, more uh, flexible in what you can do with it. Um, I think uh, as the University of Michigan has figured out, you know, how to engage with the cloud, uh, one thing I hear from time to time when I go to various uh, meetings is, well, you know, maybe we need to build some of our own cloud. Uh, there's always this feeling that if it's in my data center or my cloud, it's more secure than being in somebody else's cloud. Now, if you've ever seen my data center, you know you'd much rather have it in the public cloud. Nothing <laughs> like being able to tell somebody to get off your cloud, though. That's right. We'll, we'll find out later. <laughs> get off of my cloud. Hey, hey. Uh, Q is for the inventors of the cloud. Uh, the first version was invented by the guy who does all that stuff for Bond uh, back in the 70s. And then some alien uh, did the second cloud 2.0 more recently. Seems a hard one. Uh, R is uh, for rack space. Uh, rack space is in very much the same business as Amazon. Uh, rack space is claimed to, so uh, Amazon, they have all these different virtual products you can use, you know, virtual servers, but it's really hard to ever find somebody at Amazon to answer your question, tell you why something broke. Uh, you're never going to find the Amazon salesperson to help you out, or the customer support line, or even a telephone number. Maybe you can find an email address uh, where your mail won't bounce. So Rackspace's idea is, look, we're like Amazon, but we care. And so, <laughs> so uh, we're going to charge you a little bit more, maybe. And, but you know, a lot of their offerings look a lot like what Amazon brings to the table. Uh, but the Rackspace guys, uh, they're sort of the caring. Uh, Their homepage says backed by fanatical support. Fanatical support. The sort of the zappos of the cloud, right? You know, um, I, you know, and, and trade shows they give away M and M's. So if you're ever at a trade show, <laughs> uh, you want to stop by the rack space. Uh, Salesforce um, is another one I wanted to talk about. So I put up that one slide, you know, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or software as a service. Um, well, Salesforce is kind of software as a service. So I remember we had this really awful project uh, that Amy made us do uh, once upon a time. Uh, give away of Amy so people know you. There she is. So uh, one of Amy's duties at uh, ICPSR is to find researchers who are doing interesting, interesting work where the work results in data sets being produced. And then Amy hounds them. And when Amy's not hounding them, she has other people who work for her hound them. Until they get so weak, they give it to us. And, uh, <laughs> so uh, in a lot of ways, uh, that need, it's not even like trying to make a sale, right? Except it's a little bit in reverse this time. 
And so at one point we were building various kind of sales, you know, customer relationship management software systems for Amy. And it was clear that we could just, you know, no matter, um, you know, no matter how much time we would spend building this kind of stuff, it would really never be as good as something you can buy. But then the question is, you know, a lot of these things are really expensive to go buy because they're, they're made for big companies that, that are rolling in dough and have lots of customers. And of course, the people Amy was chasing, they weren't going to give us money, they were just going to give us data. Um, so what do we do? Um, so I don't know, maybe about a, maybe two or three years ago, we, we came upon Salesforce. And so we started managing this information in the cloud and using the tools that you get with Salesforce um, to you know, generate reports, and um, I don't know, for all I know at this point, uh, Jared might have Salesforce sending automated emails stalking people. Um, so if you need to stalk people and you don't want to build your own system, Salesforce is great. What's that? Passes for stalking. Uh, T is for time. So one question uh, often with um, <coughs> with the cloud is, will it save me money? I don't think it actually will save you all that much money, but it'll save you time. Because all the time where you would have had to buy the equipment or figure out what the right equipment is, or go build the thing, or resize the thing, or fix the thing, or maintain the thing, um, the cloud guys end up doing that. Again, depending upon what you buy. So when you're doing business with salesforce.com, you never have to go in and patch the Windows server or you never have to replace the hardware that broke. The Salesforce guys are doing that. They're charging you for it, but they're doing it for you. So it's easy to find. U is for utility computing. And uh, there's a, so I'll recommend the book. You should go buy Eric's book, obviously. Uh, but if you buy a second book this week, uh, there's one called The Big Switch uh, by Nick Carr. And uh, Nick Carr is um, uh, a Harvard Business Review, or, or at least he wrote articles for it. Uh, so he wrote an article a few years back called um, Why IT Doesn't Matter Anymore. And his premise was, you know, look, companies are, are sinking so much dough into IT systems, not the stuff that's going to make them sell more stuff or do better, um, make a better mousetrap, but just in his basics. Um, and it just, it's silly. You know, they're, they're just losing their shirts. And so uh, uh, the car came up with a book a couple, maybe two years after that, The Big Switch. And its premise is, you know, look, once upon a time, people generated their own electricity. You had your own, you know, you, or your own energy. You know, you had your own water wheel, or you had your own energy station nearby. And then eventually, in the uh, late, uh, uh, late 19th century, the commercial offering, the power grid, really started to emerge. And so instead of power being something you needed to do yourself, you just got the power from you know, the cloud. And there was a tipping point where people knew that it was safe and it was secure and it would work most of the time. And so there was really no need to generate your own energy and have all the infrastructure and expense for that. Uh, so it's a, it's a very interesting book. It's uh, you know, well worth reading. And uh, a lot of the... A lot of um, the lot of people are talking about cloud computing. Uh, utility computing is another term that gets used for the same kind of phenomenon. It's you know the computing is always on, it's always there. You can get as much as you need as long as you can pay for it. Uh, v is for Voodoo. Uh, Voodoo is the uh, same kind of space as Netflix, commercial space. It's a place you can go to. Uh, it might be programmed. It might already be built into the firmware of your Blu-ray player, your DVD player. I know ours shows a bunch of different providers. Some of them we do business with, and some we don't. Uh, I thought Voodoo was an interesting one uh, because, again, it's entertainment in the cloud. Uh, but the guys that own Voodoo are Walmart. So you know, if Walmart's in the cloud, it's a very, it's a very thrifty part of the cloud with good prices. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, access for Zen. Um, Zen. Zen is not the cloud, but Zen is uh, kind of helps make the cloud possible. Uh, Zen is a piece of software that allows you to host different operating systems on a computer. It's one of the pieces of software that help things become virtual. 
So the people that have maybe a big, big server uh, running Zen, and then on top of that they run their Windows server and their uh, Unix server and a few other servers of different stripes. And uh, when people do that and make it available to others on kind of a rental basis, that's basically what cloud computing is. Uh, why is for yes or no. So when you're wondering, you know, should I be using cloud computing? Uh, is it cloud for me? Uh, this is a very important question. You should not try to answer this question by yourself. You need to find an expert, consultant, very expensive, I'm afraid. You should find somebody like that to help you answer this question. There are several of them here in the room. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Is there a government? What's Walmart? Walmart. Oh, yeah, Walmart for Voodoo. Okay. And these are all in Prezi, too, so they'll be available to the world. Or they probably already are. Uh, last one I want to mention, uh, Z, or Z, for people. Uh, uh, Zoho. Uh, Zoho is something I kind of stumbled upon a couple of years ago. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's in the cloud. Uh, it's, there's stuff, they've got different levels. Uh, the lowest level is free. You can sign up if you want more stuff. Uh, and Zoho is a place that makes um, business reporting, spread, uh, not spread sheets, uh, databases available. Uh, so in fact, uh, we, uh, my wife and I uh, do work for our neighborhood association. And there's a list of you know, uh, you know, people, who lives in what house, uh, what's the address of the different lots in the neighborhood, about 250 uh, homes. And so we were always needing to like, generate reports, like who's moving out, who's moving in. Uh, we produce a little phone book for the neighborhood, so you know, what's each person's phone number. And uh, you need a place to manage this. So you know, the kind of old school way would be, well, put in a bunch of Excel spreadsheets and I'm kind of cut and pasting, and boy, every time I want to generate a report, that's kind of a pain. Um, so we found the Zoho thing, uh, which has been just great. Um, if you're at all familiar, if you've dabbled in, in uh, Microsoft Access at all, do little databases, um, you could certainly do the Zoho stuff. Um, for the free version, you're allowed to have like maybe a dozen tables and a couple of different users. Um, they don't back your stuff up for you. You can do that yourself. Uh, I don't know, for maybe like 100 bucks a year or something like that, then you get you know, a lot more features. Um, but anyhow, I mean, Zoho is kind of, you know, Microsoft Access type stuff and business reporting uh, in the cloud. And, uh, yeah. so uh, that's kind of it, A through Z. Uh, I, I think, I, do I have time for questions? Yeah, about yeah, five minutes or so for questions. <laughs> Who's got a question? Yes. Uh, I'm going back to my, <clears throat> going back to your privacy thing, I do taxes. Obviously, very private information. So when someone talks about, you know, doing this on the cloud, I get very nervous. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. So so it, it, it's my clients. Yeah. So um, uh, I use TurboTax to do my taxes, and I think TurboTax has like a cloud offering, right? You can use their website. Yeah. I never use that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Was there a question? <laughs> you started talking about CRM software yeah. and um, Salesforce.com, and you were mentioning that Salesforce has something similar, and if you were a small business, maybe you would turn to that. Is that where you were going with that? that yeah. If you're a small business looking for CRM functionality, is that where you would turn? Yeah, very much so. I mean, so if I, if I was the IT guy at a small not-for-profit, $10, $12 million of revenue, and I had to build a, a CRM system, I would not build it. I would call up the guys, and say, actually I would use a web form, sign up at Salesforce, turn a couple of knobs to say what I need and what I want to pay for, and uh, just pay my credit card bill every month. Just, just to add to that, sorry, uh, Zoho is a CRM as well. They have functionality. Thanks. Any more cloud questions? Or cloudy questions? Here we go. Are you uh, using Amazon for a disaster recovery type of model? So do you have uh, cloud servers with them? Yeah, no, th th yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we use Amazon in kind of two ways. One is it's exactly a disaster recovery thing. We call it our replica. 
And it's not like a hot fail over, a human needs to take an action, but it's a relatively simple action. Um, so that, you know, if me or, or one of my uh, crew are, are the on call, and it's the weekend and we've been drinking heavily, we can still figure out how to do it. Uh, and then we also use Amazon to store some of our, our content, our archival content. And whenever we don't store it on site, we always encrypt it with you know, pretty good encryption with pretty long keys. Um, so the copy that's in Amazon's cloud is, is encrypted that way. So easy for storage. All right. So uh, why don't we just cut it off there? Because I think that was a great talk. Let's give Brian Beecher a big round of applause. People, it's 1240 approximately, but I think we can easily get around the whole room. So we will start over here today. And uh, please, when you introduce yourself, you know, keep it reasonably brief so that nobody has to resent you for talking too long. <laughs> tell us who you are, tell us your company, and then uh, if you need something, you can ask for it. And then we'll just pass the mic and please stand up when you talk. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Mary Newholt, and I actually do a variety of things. Um, I'm a freelance writer. And I also am involved with marketing, and um, I also happen to be in like security Tammy Burgess with Women Making Connections, and we host events for women to meet each other in a fun social environment that's really focused on growing your business. And I have two needs today. I'm looking for a programmer who's really into heavy coding and knows all that stuff, and I'm also looking for someone who is familiar with Joomla. It's um, Content management system website. And if you don't know what it is, then I guess I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robert Sloboda. I'm an independent consultant and a business, business and technology professional. I cut my teeth many years ago on Unix and Open System, which is now thankfully open source and much more broadly accepted. Hi, I'm Lizette from Suzette Creative Resources. My legendary Lou. Yes, I'm a writer, and I'm looking for people who need a writer for websites. Hi, I'm Mary Suzanne Paddock. I'm an executive coach and consultant. Um, I work with CEOs and owners of um, businesses to help them live and lead as their best selves and to achieve what they want in work and life. And I also have the important identity of being Brian Beecher's neighbor. And find out that my phone number and address are in the cloud. <laughs> You weren't supposed to know that. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Kendra Kerr with Keller Williams Realty. And I am looking for to sell our house because we have a short of pumps and So if you want to help, you can me. Very well organized and 
Hi, I'm Ben Sikinski. I'm in sales and marketing. I graduated from shifting gears and I also help Roger out with the video um, production here. Yeah, Dennis helped me uh, and another guy with a uh, video for uh, Ace uh, yesterday. And the uh, videos are up, but we're going to promote them a little bit more later on. Um, yeah, I, I use about 90% of my stuff is in the cloud, so definitely. Uh, Paul and I here are from uh, Vendor Mass Technologies. We have a cloud application that we offer, but uh, we came from here. Uh, we also uh, wanted to find out how people talk about the cloud that's not technical. Hi, I'm Alicia Wicker yeah. from Hewlett-Packard for Web well, Design. We specialize, specialize in um, custom Joomla sites for small businesses. I'm Jeff Agden. I'm a retired computer professional, I guess. And I'm here for you. Hi, I'm Chris Rizzo. I'm the marketing coordinator at Online Tech. Uh, we're a data center provider and managed hosting provider, similar to RackSpace. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, April Sage, Marketing Director for Online Tech. We're like Rackspace, except we really, really care, and we're local. <laughs> uh, and we're also HIPAA SACs and PCI audited, so we can keep your data really, really safe. Um, I am Jan McDonough, JLM Associates. I do taxes, accounting, and consulting. I'm John Eisenberg with Elite Networking and Consulting. We're the hardware specialist that uh, Brian had been referring to. We repair computers and we make house calls. And this is my first visit today. Thank you. I'm uh, Tom Bobney. I'm the owner of Mobile Exhibit uh, Specialist. We basically uh, do trade shows on wheels. So I ask is if there's someone you know in the trade show business that uh, handles the budget in their trade show for their company, I'd like to talk to them. And uh, I use Dropbox quite a bit. It works pretty well. Hi, I'm Arthur Salisbury. I'm an uh, IT manager and uh, not really buying or selling anything. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Fox. I work for a user experience consultancy called Tentem in Ann Arbor. And I'm one of these people who is thinking about uh, your yes no slide very much. I've used uh, several of these services, so definitely talk to a few people want to see. Uh, hi, my name is Gail. Um, I'm a recent uh, EMA graduate. Got my UBA last August, and also acquired my Google Analytics certification. Um, I currently manage the books for two small businesses, and I am on a serious career search, looking for a full-time job. That's why I'm here. <coughs> Hi, my name is Lee Pearson. I'm a local information security consultant, and I work with Brian in the past. Hi, I'm Katie Ma. I'm currently stuck to uh, websites. One Get is for uh, B2B. Um, I'm 
Linda Detterman. I work with uh, Brian at ICPSR. I'm the marketing director, and I'm here to learn about how an organization might adapt to the cloud. Troublemaker. <laughs> and it have help. I'm Hank Zampa, affiliate with Into One Corp. We help people make their regular expenditures on a monthly basis and turn them into income generating assets, which eventually end up being residual income. So we're here, if you're a place interested in doing that, we're here to help you do that. Hi, my name is Brenda Bentley. I've written a walking guide to Ann Arbor called Riverwalks Ann Arbor, and right now I'm writing a walking guide to Woodward Avenue, which requires a tremendous amount of research over the time. I have a website and a blog, and I have to do everything myself, so I'm really grateful for stuff like that, but I'm going to buy Jared's book. And I've met the name Johnson and <laughs> I'm Owen Cartha, I'm a software consultant and uh, software developer, and I've also worked with uh, a company building their cloud infrastructure for uh, solving cancer. And uh, we use Amazon and we use private clouds. Hi, I'm Stacy from Dollarville Printing, we're your local digital print shop, you guys all know that. And we love ISR, not for the cloud, but because we do lots of printing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but the highest tech for us. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian DePlanche with Zenica. We are a Microsoft technology firm dealing in Microsoft Cloud Solutions, Software as a Solution, uh, Office 365, Managed Network Services, 24-7, uh, 365. We'll manage your technology so you won't have to. The unique ask that I have is uh, I have a client that is actually looking to hire eight new people. Uh, they're having a hard time finding qualified people. They're looking for people with expertise in process management with a background in engineering and construction. So if you have anybody that knows, they know the fields that are looking for work, and give me a turn. Hey, my name is Rick Peter. I'm a local landscape architect. I read a blog in the Anna.com about native plants, and I'm actually looking to transition into marketing so I can learn more about the field. <coughs> Charles Antonelli, <clears throat> and I work at the University of Michigan. I do uh, high-performance computing clusters, and uh, <coughs> I'm here today sort of to learn about, you know, learn more about the cloud, and uh, maybe to irritate Brian a little bit, but I'm looking for, really, um, I'd like to teach a class uh, that's uh, very heavy on um, use of hardware, and I want to do that in the cloud. <laughs> Is any ideas? I'd like to use Google Cloud, but I can only, I can only start 20 instances, so I can't do more than that. Amazon just wants to be a little I'm Steve Burling, and until yesterday, I worked for Brian. And I was the uh, guy who was implementing his vision in the cloud. So I am the high priced consultant that you want to talk to. <laughs> Steve, you're welcome. <laughs> Good work, Brian. The check's in the mail. <laughs> I'm Dan Beatty. I worked for the University of Michigan for 30 years in IT professional. Brian and I crossed paths in our careers about 20 years ago, and I think I won the white hair contest. Um, I'm now uh, in my retirement independent uh, iPhone, iPad programmer, and independent web objects programmer, and I do not need more work. <laughs> I'm Laura Abramson, and uh, my background is in training and marketing. I've been out of the workforce by choice for the last several years and looking to get back into the workforce. I also have recent training in SEO, um, Google Analytics, and social media. And I came here today because I'm actually interviewing with a few companies that do the private cloud. So, good time. Now you can. You can. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Cole Blackman. Uh, I have the pleasure of working for Brian, even after yesterday's. <laughs> uh, as a uh, software developer and an IT processor. Hi, I'm Tom Crawford. Among other things, I teach people how to communicate better using the visual arts and how to think differently. And normally I'm working inside companies doing workshops and consulting in classes. But on March 17th, we're doing our first public workshop. It's only $100. It's in Waterford, Michigan, and we're in schools. 
any of the extra money from the event after food and natural expenses goes to open schools. But that day you'll be learn you'll learn how to make better presentations, how to do mind mapping, information graphics. We're bringing in experts from literally all over the country and in some cases outside the country uh, for a one-day workshop. So check it out, March 17th. It's visual thinking conference dot wikispaces.org. Yeah, I know. Sure. Visual thinking conference dot wikispaces.org. Hi, Hi, I'm Claire Hughes, and I'm a marketing communications and fundraising consultant, and that conference sounds really interesting, so I'll be checking it out. I'm Jack Johnson, an uh, owner and senior developer of Rocky Commerce, solid solutions for when it matters, and we're not on the cloud, that's sort of why I'm here, and we're now focusing on marketing. Hi, I'm Monty Fowler. I'm interested in just about everything, and I know some of these guys when we used to use punch cards back at U of M. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yes. Cool. Long time ago, but I remember those too. Karen Hesselberg, I'm one of the local girl marketing consultants, and we help our local merchants get online. I'm Julianne Williams, I work for Gaming Girl Design Group, uh, Cool Architecture, Cool Architects. Um, he has a new radio show on 